the judge. One of the very few scriptures commonly known in our day is, Judge not that you be not judged. Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. To many, one of the worst things that can be done is to criticize something cherished and embraced, such as a doctrinal belief or a favorite teacher, even if he is false. Such people seem unaware of their own judgment of people that they criticize for doing so. If they think it's wrong to judge, then why are they judging? Hence, they have a double standard. As we examine related scriptures on the subject of judging, you may be surprised in what you learn. One, you are actually commanded to judge. And two, you make many judgments without realizing they are actual judgments. Jesus taught, stop judging by mere appearances and make a right judgment. John chapter 7 verse 24. Hence, we are commanded to judge, but not by mere appearances. We learn more about the right and wrong way to judge from other scriptures. Galatians 2 verse 6 says, As for those who seem to be important, whatever they are makes no difference to me. God does not judge by external appearances. Those men added nothing to my message. In other words, God doesn't look at the outer shell of a person, his popularity or reputation when he evaluates someone. Instead, he judges on the basis of truth. Romans chapter 2 verse 2 says, now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. To say God judges on the basis of truth is another way of saying he judges on the basis of Scripture because God's word is truth. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. This in turn brings us back to the Bible's final authority and not sacred tradition too, or even the so-called anti-Nicene fathers, etc., the Bible alone is what God has given man for his teachings, for rebuking, correcting, training, and righteousness. All scriptures God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. The Bible also says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, the spiritual man makes judgments about all things. Rather than just condemning a judgment, we need to examine it to see if it is based on truth, that is God's word, and not just popular opinion, convenience, the typical way it has been done, or anything else. If it lines up with scripture, that judgment shouldn't be condemned. Similar to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15 is 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 12 and 13, which says this. What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside, expel the wicked man from among you. In other words, Paul rebuked the Corinthians for not judging the sexually immoral man, meeting with them as wicked and expelling him from the group. Because this type of judging is not readily practiced today, Wickedness has spread throughout the professing Christian congregation like yeast spreads through a batch of dough. Paul also wrote this about judging. If any of you has a dispute with another, dare he take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the saints? Do you not know the saints will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Afterwards, Paul also wrote this. I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 5. From that alone, it is clear that Christians are to judge. So what kind of judgment is wrong? When the Lord gave the world Matthew chapter 7, 1 through 5, he was speaking of hypocritical judgment only. Do not judge or you too will be judged, for in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. 
Paul wrote of the same wrong hypocritical judgment in Romans chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. You therefore have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Paul's teaching there was almost identical to the Lord's teaching in Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 5. Paul was saying that hypocritical judgment will bring God's judgment on that hypocrite. We are also not to pass judgment on disputable matters with one whose faith is weak. Accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. Romans chapter 14 verse 1. We are also not to judge the motive behind a deed. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 5 reads this way. Therefore judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. Hence, we are not to judge the motives behind Christian service. God will reveal the secrets of the heart. Romans chapter 2 verse 16 says, This will take place on the day when God will judge men's secrets through Jesus Christ as my gospel declares. Paul made various judgments and clearly label them as such. Now about virgins I have no command from the Lord, but I give a judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 25. Even though I am not physically present, I am with you in spirit. I have already passed judgment on the one who did this, just as if I were present. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 3. In my judgment she is happier if she stays as she is, and I think I too have the Spirit of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 40. I speak to sensible people, judge for yourselves what I say, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 15. Judge for yourselves, is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. Listen carefully to what Jesus taught. He said this, Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. We know that Luke chapter 6 verse 37 can't be referring to eternal condemnation because if an atheist doesn't condemn anyone, he will still be condemned to hell for not having a trusting and submitting faith in Jesus. A clear example of a judgment that Jesus approved is found in Luke chapter 7 40 through 43. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he canceled the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Simon's answer to that question, now which of them will love him more, was a judgment according to Jesus. This judgment was clearly not condemned by the Lord and is the same Greek word found in Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. Question. Is it right to obey man rather than God? Your answer to that simple question is a judgment according to Acts chapter 4 verse 19 which says this. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. God bless you.